Hi there. In this A2 micro presentation, we're just going to take a quick look at some market structures and think about whether they lead to an economically efficient outcome. I think the best definition of economic efficiency is probably that it's when a market process leads to an optimum allocation of scarce resources to help satisfy changing needs and wants. At A2 micro, it's really important to understand allocative efficiency, productive efficiency and dynamic efficiency. Those three will get you a long way in an exam paper. Social efficiency important in markets where there are significant external costs and benefits. So perfect competition, first of all, in this situation, in perfect competition, then we're going to assume at price P1 here that the firms are making super normal profit because the price is above the average cost curve there in, in the uh, equilibrium output. If firms are making supernormal profit, then new firms will enter the market, driving the market supply curve out to S2 and the price down to P2. Now at this price, because firms are price takers, then there's an equilibrium at the level of output here, Q2, where all firms are making normal profit, price equals average cost. And we're also at the minimum point of the average cost curve. And if they're making normal profit, they're just making enough to keep their resources in current use. But what about economic efficiency? Well, there are three types of efficiency to think about in A2, allocative, productive and dynamic. And yes, in perfect competition, this market is allocatively efficient. Price equals the marginal cost of production. It's a Pareto optimum. Nobody can be made better off without making some other agent in the market at least as worse off. So in this market, price equals marginal cost and it's allocatively efficient. It's also productively efficient because the output Q2 is supplied at minimum average cost. Just to confirm there, Q2 is the lowest point of the representative firm's average cost curve. So it is productively efficient. But dynamic efficiency is open to question. Uh, we assume that in this perfectly competitive market, firms are producing homogenous goods. And that means there's little scope for innovation uh, designed to differentiate products and make a profit. Um, technology spillovers are immediately available to all firms in the market. So you can make a case for saying that this market is productively and allocatively efficient, but not necessarily dynamically efficient. Let's move on to monopolistic competition, a hybrid market which has differentiated products, but free entry and exit. So here's the short and equilibrium for this, uh, this, this market, uh, more elastic demand curve, but downward sloping. And at the profit maximizing equilibrium Q1, where MR meets MC, the price P1 is, is above the, the unit cost of supply C1. Now, the entry of new firms and new products into the market reduces demand conditions for each remaining firm. And the long run equilibrium is a point of tangency between the average revenue curve AR2 and the average cost curve. So the output Q2, let's go back to the short run, super normal profit, long run, normal profit in this market. It's quite a tricky diagram to draw. It needs a lot of practice. So at Q2, there's an equilibrium where price equals average cost. But what about economic efficiency? Well, price is above marginal cost. So that's one of the characteristics of the market. So the equilibrium is not allocatively efficient. Let's go back to the diagram. P2 is above the marginal cost of supply. Indeed, the saturation of the market by lots of new products may also mean that we lose a little bit of productive efficiency because the existing firms in the market are not able necessarily to reach the lowest point of their unit cost curve. And again, if we go back to the diagram, you can see we're not quite at the minimum point of average cost, <coughs> perhaps because there are too many different products in the market. In this kind of industry, there's a lot of spending on, on marketing, advertising. Some economists argue that that's inefficient. Essentially, advertising may be a zero-sum game. If all firms are charging, uh, spending a lot on marketing, they may not ha actually have much impact, and that could be uh, inefficient. There's also a lot of debate about the extent to which products are packaged in, in, um, in different ways and some of the externalities associated with that. So you could perhaps bring in a social efficiency point. But this is a market where being efficient, uh, being, sorry, being successful often means having differentiated products. Um, lots of choice, lots of innovation. You can make a case for saying that this market structure is pretty good for dynamic efficiency. 
So if we make a contrast between a competitive market and a monopolistic market, let's think about what we find in this sense. So in perfect competition, as we've, as we've seen, the long run equilibrium is where price equals average cost, and this is an economically efficient outcome. Now, if we contrast that with monopoly, here's a monopoly diagram showing AR and MR for monopolist. The profit maximizing output for monopolist is Q2, and they can charge a high price P2 and make significant monopoly profit. So in that sense, monopoly is allocatively inefficient because they're uh, pricing well above marginal cost and there's a lower output. So there's a loss of productive efficiency. Indeed, some economists go further and argue that there's going to be some X inefficiency in the market. So productive efficiency is when you reach the lowest point, the lowest feasible point on your unit cost curve. But if there's a lack of competition in the market, a lack of intense day to day competition, that can lead to what's called X inefficiency. So uh, costs may rise, fixed costs in particular, costs of uh, salaries and pensions and travel expense accounts, etc. X inefficiency means that the average cost of production, the actual unit cost, is higher than on the actual average cost boundary. And that's called X inefficiency. Contestable markets, of course, is incre increasingly important. We have separate topic videos on contestable markets. And here the outcome is uncertain. So it could be the case that you could choose, you could charge a, a price P1, which is higher than average cost. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be at the profit maximizing output, but Q1 is a profitable output. And it's, but of course that sends a signal to other firms, may perhaps to come in and, and engage in hit and run entry. Now this price is, uh, is inefficient. It's above the marginal cost of supply. Uh, and therefore there's a lot of allocative efficiency, but it could be the case and actually the threat of competition causes firms to move to an equilibrium where average cost equals average revenue, normal profits are made, uh, and therefore there's a higher level of output in the economy, probably better news for consumers. So what about uh, economic efficiency in contestable markets? Well, contestable markets are likely to be more efficient than monopoly, partly because the threat of competition is a powerful influence on the actual behavior of existing firms in the market. So a highly contestable market with no sunk costs may resemble perfect competition because firms behave as if they were in a market where there's a lot of intense day-to-day -day rivalry. So if you open up a market to new competition and make it more contestable, you may lead to a more economically efficient outcome. Okay, so that's been a quick journey through market structures and efficiency. There are separate topic videos on each of these market structures where we look at these issues in more detail.